let's talk about the wonderful concept of arrays. All right, we found us back in tutorial once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about arrays over here. And they are a doozy. So the first thing is that they are actually a little more complicated than the things that we've previously worked with. And the story I always tell is that the first time I was basically tasked to learn arrays in university, then I said, I never, I'm never, just never going to use arrays, which is, of course, not really the way to approach anything new. Because let's suppose over here we have three questions and three answers in strings, right? This is already prepared over here. And let's say I tell you, you know what, let's add a fourth one over here. And, you know, you're like, okay, sure, I just add question four, right? And whatever it might be, what is the capital of France, right? And then you put that in and then you're like, okay, easy enough. I can, can just put in the string answer four and you can put in Paris and that's all great. However, now I'm going to tell you, well, you know what? Now add 15 more, right? So I'm going to say now add 15 more. Now at some point you're going to be like, what, that this is not Wait a second. This is not okay, right? I duplicate all this craziness and I'm like, well, and now I want you to all output them, right? First the question, then the answer. And you're going to be like, well, I don't, what, what is going on? Because you might be like, well, let's loop through them because we've had a similar thing before, right? Where we, where I was like, well, let's output like all numbers and then let's output years and then let's output all leap years. So you're like, you know what? I've learned about the for loop, so I can just do this and I'm going to say, well, we're going to go to four or something like that, right? And then we're going to do I++ over here and we're just going to be, well, let's just print it out, right? System and then you're like, well, question and then, well, it's like question, well, it would be like something like question I, right? That of course doesn't work. You're unable to use this I over here to target, let's say, question one, two, and three, and four, and so on, that does not work. So, does not work. That means there has to be another way. And of course, there is, and that is where the array comes in. So, an array, you can think of this as a list, because really, that is pretty much what it is. You basically just have an array or a list of multiple different values in that specific variable. So, if you were to make a string array, then we would start with the string, right? So this is the name of the, this is once again the data type. Then you put in the brackets over here. Now this now becomes a string array. We're going to call this questions. So this is, this once again remains the normal type, right? Instead of a string, this is now a string array. And you can even see it right here, right? This is a string array, not a string. And then we're going to initialize this to a new string. And you can see it actually suggests to a string and then the brackets over here inside of the brackets. You have to put in how many elements are going to be in there. Let's say four. And then, of course, we end it with a semicolon. And this is how you make a new array. And like I said, what's very important is that the number of elements has to be written right here. So that's fine. And now what we can do is we can actually add things to this array by saying questions. So you can see it suggests this to us. And if I hit tab to autocomplete this, I can then once again take these brackets and I can get or set the element with the index of whatever I put in. So for example, index zero, let's think about this again. In programming, we start counting at zero. So the first element is going to be element of index zero. And this is then going to be set to this one over here. I'm just going to copy it. So just select it, press control C and control V to paste it in. And you can see that now the first element or element with index zero is now what does www stand for? And we can do this a couple of times, right? So then we can just duplicate this control D and what we can do is we can say one, two, and three, and just change the questions over here. So once again, I just, I basically just copy this over. There you go. And there you go. Now, while we have four elements, like, like I said, we start counting at zero. So zero, one, two, three are the indices over here. However, there are four elements. It's very important that you get that into your head that we start counting at zero. And in the very beginning, it might be a little bit confusing to you, but you will see why this is extremely useful in a second. We can then basically do the same thing and make another string array over here, right? String, and once again, the brackets to denote this is an array. This is the answers array with a new string. And once again, with a new string array, and that's going to be four again. And we then have answers over here, zero. And we can then also copy over the answers right here. So this is the World Wide Web, and we're going to duplicate this once again. And let's just get the answers in here as well. There we go. So now we have both the answers as well as the questions in strings over here. And if I were to want to output one of those, right, let's say I just want to output the first question, right? Let's say Q is going to be, well, questions and then passing in whatever question I want to output, right? So this once again denotes index zero. So it's going to output for me. What does a WWW stand for? 
And then I can immediately output the answer over here as well. So that's going to be answers. And that this is also of index zero right there. And if I were to run this, you can see question, what does www stand for? Answer World Wide Web. Awesome. And now if I would say to you, well, now I'll put all of them. Absolutely no worries. We can make a for loop, right? Integer i zero. And then it's going to go to four over here. I plus plus. And we can say system out print line. And then I can actually copy this over here. And instead of the zero right here, which would print out the always the same thing, I can pass in the I over here because I can pass in variables into the brackets as well. As I is going to increase, it's going to print out all four of our question and answer pairs. So let's take a look and you can see this is I zero, I one, I two, I three. Pretty freaking neat. Now, one thing that's quite important that you have to be cognizant of is that let's say we were to change this back to three over here. And then I'm just going to comment out the question and the answer over here. And I forget to change the four right here, two or three. What would happen is that I would get an exception over here because this is the array index out of bounds exception. Because now our array right here has a length of three instead of four. Obviously, the index three no longer works because we start counting at zero. We now only have 0, 1, and 2. There no longer is an element with index 3 inside of the array. But to combat something like this, what you can do is, let's say I also change the questions array over here to 3. Then what I can say is, I can say questions.length. And now it's going to count exactly to the end of the strip of the array, basically. Right? So this is going to be always how many elements are in that array. This is the same number that we were passing in right here. And now if I do this, absolutely no worries. All of them get printed out. And if I were to change this up again, right, I would get answers three and questions three. And I change this back to four over here. You can see, bam, it all just works. And this is one of the reasons why counting at zero is just so much easier. Because in this case, you can just put in the normal for loop, put in the length of your array, right? This is like the, the size of your list, how many elements are in that array or in that list. And because we're starting at zero, you can just count up all the way to length minus one, and then you're done. And that just does it all for you, basically. Now, one important thing, once again, if the arrays are a little bit still confusing to you, absolutely no worries. This is definitely a little bit of a more advanced topic, or let's say intermediate. But one important thing is you have to play around with this a little bit. So I, I definitely highly recommend, especially with this topic, you download the code over here, right? You just copy over the main method and you run it and then you play around with it, right? You add a couple of questions over here. You add a couple of answers. You see what happens if you get an error. Absolutely no worries. Like I said, I showed you, I showed you the error right here. If there is an index passed in that doesn't exist, you should get the array out of bounds exception. So that just always tells you, hey, there is an index that the number you pass in is like too, is too high and that element doesn't exist. So definitely play around with this a little bit and then you're sure to understand all about the array in no time. When you have an array like this, there's actually another type of for loop that you can use and that is called a for each loop right here. But right? you can create it automatically or you can just create it yourself, the same for keyword. And then you put in the variable type that you have. Let's say this is going to be called a question and then you do a colon and then put in the array over here. And that loops through each of the elements independently. So we could basically print out all the questions here individually. You can see. So this would be read for each string question in questions. And then you do whatever you want to do, basically. The cool thing about that is that the for each loop, you can see it now prints out all of the questions. The negative, of course, is that we don't have an index right here. So we can't print out both the question and the answer simultaneously. So for some things, the for each loop is absolutely amazing and is great. For other things, the normal for loop with the counting i over here, the index, is better. But yeah, that is it for this tutorial right here, talking about arrays. Next time in this video, we'll talk about methods. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.